<laughs> Thank you. Cool. Um, it didn't do the event. It didn't uh, come up with a pop-up window, did it? No. It says on air. Cool. Are we on air, but with a different go to video? The, go to the live deck. Oh, it just told me watch live now. Go so. to the live deck. Please. Just the technical stuff. Which one? Please bear with us. Oh, uh, the, the web page behind, page behind the window. We're better at doing yeah, it's all extrusion and plastic recycling than we are at making videos. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it's going. Okay, welcome. Yes, we are. Thank you. That's a very good point. Let's <laughs> Stay in your lane. We know what we're good at. Welcome to Phil About Live. In this series, no, in this video, we are going over uh, plastic additives. This is something we've talked about in the past, but we thought it would be good to... <laughs> That's our one viewer is Josh. Hey, can Woo. you comment as we do this? Oh, Josh is on air now. He was going to know if you... Ah, oh, bummer. Okay, let's get back to it. Plastic additives. We've touched on it in the past. Woo. I'm so excited for this one. Um, deep breath. You got this. Uh, <laughs> we're foreshadowing. Yeah, foreshadowing. Um, we're going over plastic grades. We've, we have a list of like every single, well, not just plastic grades, but um, different additives that are put into plastic to make plastic perform in different ways. What's an additive? Let's start there. I think it's something you add to plastic. It's a pretty basic definition. I think that one works. Nice. You take some plastic, right? And then you additive it, it. <laughs> and then you have a plastic with different properties. Exactly. Because without additives, plastics, you know, they're they're pretty inert, but at the same time, they biodegrade. Right. We don't talk about that very often. No, we don't. And sometimes you need different properties in it, as we'll dive through. Flexibility. Flexibility. And other, other stuff. So, yeah. Slipping, all sorts of stuff. Um, so we'll start with base plastic. This is like, base plastic is, well, it's a base material, right? So our ABS, our PLAs that we have, this one, which is not one we have on the site, I don't think this one tested well, but this is like a base material. Um, it's a base material because there's really no other additives. We, you know, we buy this product by its name. Um, it could have properties we're buying for, but uh, what we would do is take this and then mix in our additives into it. Um, that actually leads to my point with PLA. So PLA, we have uh, three grades we work with here at Philobot. We have the 40, 43D, we have the 3D850, and we have the 3D870. Um, as NatureWorks moves forward with that product line for 3D printing filament, they are upgrading that and putting different additives into the PLA, different polymer chains and all that good stuff, um, and putting additives in to make it perform better. So like. The 3D870 has a higher uh, heat deflection temperature compared to the 3D850. Do the, do the, I guess, model names, do those have any bearing that we would understand as consumers, or is that really like an internal kind of code, like a I part number? I think sometimes it's internal, sometimes it's like, like we have one supplier, um, you know, it says FR in the name, so it's like ABS FR, so that stands for ABS flame retardant, right? So we know that it's ABS with a flame retardant. Uh, mixed in and then it could have the UV which is the list we're diving into now. Yeah. So actually let's uh, let's dive into that list. Let's dive in. So we've covered base materials um, and then we're going to talk about these additives which are things you could add to these base materials. Um, is it safe to say that all additives could be added to base material? So if you have a base material like all these additives we I mean, talked about. Physically we could add anything to yeah. plastic. We could you know we could throw in some chopped kale if we wanted to, but it doesn't mean it's gonna enhance right. the base plastic in a way that we were looking for. Right, and maybe do something. We could totally. call it organic if we did that. Hmm. Not, not like USDA organic, <laughs> but now it contains organic material. Don't eat that. <laughs> do not eat that. All right, uh, so the main things that, that the 3D printing market sees for additives mm -hmm. are fillers, and colorants, and I'll just let's quickly spend some time on those. So colorants is, I mean, cool colors, right? Uh, this could include just standard base colors, the ones you see here, which are these ones are called a master batch. So they're color concentrate, uh, very high loading color. Mm. If you were to make filament straight from this, it would be like it wouldn't work well. And actually, have we tried making? We should try that. That'd be cool. But uh, if you were to make filament from this, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't perform the way the base grade would. Um, so yes, as uh, we were just this, zooming in. This was in, an example of the, you know, how well we, do, how much, I guess, we dilute the colorant in. 
Right. What, one to a hundred, right? Is that what we do? Uh, it the, depends, but yeah, I mean, 1%, 2% or 4% are the normal. Okay. So but even I mean, at 4%, that's still pretty low ratio we're looking at. And different additives will have different ratios. Mm -hmm. Specific for our color, it's that 2%. And you can see this, this is that base grade, the clear stuff, and then we're adding that color to it. Um, so colorant's a big one. And then inside of colorants, we have, um, we have glow, so you can have different colors that glow. You can have the glow. Where'd the glow go? Well, we had we had some glow. Well, I wouldn't glow right now. Is this one? Yay! We found it. Good job. So this is a glow additive that could be added. I don't know what percent we add. Probably down to twenty. Up to twenty percent. It really glows then, probably. Yeah, it's another additive. There's so many things you can do. There's, um, have you ever seen, we have the chairs, we have the lawn chairs outside that have like, they have the, it doesn't look like a color that was mixed in, right? Like it's all different colors and kind of looks like, a, like it was not spray painted, but it has a pattern to it. Mm. There's other things like a granite texture. So if you're in the injection molding industry, they'll just kind of mix in all these colors. And then when it goes into the part, it's not homogeneously mixed. So it has this like interesting texture. So there's a lot you can do with colors, crazy amounts, and you can do color matching, and yeah, I think color actually would be the most common difference. Well, especially in 3D printing, because it's yes, you know, it's the thing that we're looking for, and it's also it's the most tangible. And when we talk about color, it's the thing that, from at least when you're extruding it, mm -hmm. from the moment you drop some pellets into the hopper to having that plastic out the other side, it's fairly short so it's easy right. to wrap your brain around when we talk about something else yeah like some of this stuff you don't UV see. protective you know you yeah. don't see the impact because it just doesn't break down right right and that's actually the so the UV actually well, we should dive into that one let's go back to fillers sorry so <laughs> jump in the gun yeah that's good that's good so we got colorant huge category there and then we have fillers so this is a really cool one too and we've seen a lot of this in the 3d printing space I mean we've seen like crazy stuff like uh, the coffee the buzzed filament with like uh, hex and stuff, uh, hops. So yeah. somehow they put hops into it. Hops, hemp, hemp. We've seen hemp. Uh, we've had the Potent Rope company that that uses is our that, machine. Is that the name Potent yep. Rope? Yep. They they use a, a filbot. Yeah. To make stuff. Shout yeah. out to Potent Rope. Yay! Send some over. That might be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody stop. <laughs> All right, so fillers uh, can include, this This is a little interesting. There's like fillers up here and then there's a list down here. But fillers you are metals. That's good. I can. You I can. can. I can. So I don't want you to get confused. I'm, I'm good. Okay, sweet. Um, so fillers include metal, talc, uh, granite. So that's like, you know, stone, limestone, coffee grounds, and then we just talked about all the other cool stuff. So this is nickel and silver here. And this is aluminum. What else we got? Yeah, so normally you'd want to wear like a mask when you're doing this. And then we got copper. I'll just do this one more. And then there's brass. So we. So I'm going to put these back in. Carefully. Carefully. You should pan over that way. <laughs> <laughs> Um, over here we have some filaments. This is uh, this is labric. So this texture is kind of like a stony, gritty texture, which is pretty cool. We actually haven't printed with this yet. We have to because that would be sweet. And then we have this wood filament. So this filament is uh, has a polymer base. The polymer is acting as a binder, and that's also the same thing with this limestone one or sandstone. Um, this has wood fiber, basically really fine sawdust uh, mixed into it. You alright over there? I'm good. We'll find out in 20, 30 years. Nice. <laughs> That's not good. Um, so yeah, just some examples. I mean, there is, there's, there's hundreds. I think mm -hmm. there's over a hundred different types of fillers that are in the 3D printing space that people are playing with. Protopasta, shout out to Protopasta. They have some really neat stuff. They have the metal, uh, metal infused. So, that, you know, you were just showing the metal, but they have, uh, they have like production stuff they use. Um, and sell to the world. So that's cool. So sweet. We've gone over fillers, colorant, 
Let's talk about uh, plasticizers. I don't know too much about plasticizers. Um, the main thing I wrote down was melt flow modifiers. So every plastic, when it's melted, will run at a different rate. The viscosity is different. Um, with melt flow f modifiers, you can either go higher viscosity or lower, basically change it to adapt your, your need, right? Um, or your production that you're doing. There is stabilizers. So this is um, if you have a material that you need to work in a certain environment, whether it's a chemical environment like chemical washing or high temp, low temp, high, yep, high temp, low temp, super cold, like sub-zero, um, humidity. I mean, wouldn't that also be a UV, like a stabilizer, a UV is a stabilizer? Well, that's radiation I and mean, we're talking like sunlight there really. Okay. So, I mean, you can have a mix and, and that's, you yeah. know, we'll, we'll talk about mixing them later on, but. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, so yes, there's stabilizers. There's antioxidants additives that you can add blueberries you can add blueberries Extreme plastic with blueberries what does it smell like blueberry it smells berries <laughs> like snowberries i mean they make the coffee one that smells like coffee so what is that voice that is true i'm going to say that every time you talk only the you first time at once in a video it's gonna be great all right um so antioxidants this is where <laughs> A plastic can oxidize, um, and that kind of dives into UV as well. But basically, this additive allows, well, blocks the oxidiz oxidization of the polymer chain, which is good because once you start oxidizing your polymer chains, they start breaking down. And that's really what happens when anything oxidizes. <laughs> it's like way too serious for me to. Yeah. When, when iron rusts, I mean, right. you know, cancer in the body, it's all, it's all roughly, I mean, it's not the same chemical process, but the. The, the uh, overview, the, what you're looking at, what you're observing, mm -hmm. tends to be the same. Things are breaking down. Nice. Yeah. I wonder if you can have oxidants. Sure. If you can have antioxidants. Sure. If you extrude some, you know, some fried chicken and some really bad vegetable oil, that's an oxidant. Yep. That's true. Chicken filament. Or mice. All right. Uh, flame retardants. <laughs> flame retardants are a thing that we found that's very popular. Uh, flame retardant is a additive that actually coats the, it, it covers the, I think this is how it works. We should probably fact check this before I go any deeper. Just run with it. Sounds good. Uh, it coats the polymer chains so that no oxygen can get to the polymer. Nope. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to look into that, but flame retardants basically make it so that the, if the material is exposed to flame, once the flame source is removed, it won't um, continue burning. Uh, there's a few different levels of uh, flame ratings, uh, different polymers, you know, ABS is harder, could be harder to uh, make flame resistant compared to, you know, maybe a higher temp material. Mm. Um, so all sorts of stuff there, different ratings. Uh, we actually have a flame retardant material on our site. Yep. Uh, it's actually approved by the FAA. Well, it's a certification from the FAA to be printed and used in uh, aerospace applications. So you can make your own airplane. And then set it on fire and it will stop burning when you take the fire away. <laughs> so you can't set it on fire. I mean, you shouldn't, <laughs> but you could. Uh, vinyl siding, I believe, has this mm -hmm. in it. That makes sense. Yeah, I think the, the first versions of vinyl siding did it. Yeah. We should probably fact check that. All right, ultraviolet. Uh, this one's actually cool. And it got me thinking about another one, which is probably actually cooler, but UV, so uh, ultraviolet radiation, and uh... I wonder how similar that is to the glow. Yeah, and I was thinking, remember that, so voice behind the camera, do you remember that, um, what was that material, the edge glow? Plastic. It was like, it aligned the light rays. And the edges. I can't remember, but yeah, I think it only works with injection molding. Okay. Not or extruding because it like aligns something. Yeah, because like that sharp edge or something. Um, okay, so UV additive or UV additive. Uh, you know, if you have a product out in the sun that's exposed to sunlight or UV, right? Like uh, the things the dentist use to cure fillings, um, mm -hmm. you'd want that to be made out of plastic with a UV stabilizer in it. Um, Anti-static agents, so we have these blue drums. Uh, don't pan to that, it's really dirty over there. Um, he's gone, oh, he almost did. Uh, the blue drums get staticky, right? And it would be awesome if there was like anti-static agents in that. Um, well, there's one. Okay. 
Yeah, so that has no anti-static agent in it, and all the shavings just get mm. electric, you know, electrostatically charged, and we're like, it's shocking you, and <laughs> yeah. I actually like don't like going near it. That's like why we have auto grinding. Not that I would grind more if it didn't shock me. Anyway, um, poor auto. <laughs> there's blowing agents for foaming. <laughs> Keep it together, guys. Try them. <laughs> so this is like the packaging material. Actually, the packaging material we have on our our boxes. Uh, well, we don't. It's alright. Um, You've seen all styrofoam. Styrofoam uses uh, foaming agents, um, and it just makes the polymer, you know, expand when it's being produced. Uh, another one is anti-foaming agents. <laughs> so you can go the other way. Um, you put the two in at the same time, so it would open up, open a wormhole, to another dimension. Wormhole plastic. We should try it. No, I'm here. Yeah, it'd be a mess. Um, and Josh, you're gonna love all the things we're coming up to test with. Ooh. This is great. Uh, okay, so anti foaming and then lubricants. So this is it. Wow, those two. <laughs> you know, I was gonna be fine on that one. This is all you. <laughs> I was gonna be fine with two, but not three in a row. All right, so lubricants. This is a really interesting one. Um, different industries, so extrusion versus injection molding. They use different materials. You know, we're learning and trying to use every material, utilize it with our systems, right? Um, because we don't know what you're gonna use in our system. So we wanna, exactly. you know, we're trying to produce the information that makes your job or hobby or whatever easier. And the hardware. You know, we wanna make sure our hardware yeah, can absolutely. do the widest range. Uh, the reason we bring that point up is because if uh, you're an injection molder, your material could have a mold release already built into the polymer. Mm -hmm. And that's something they make, they put into it when they're making the base material, right? So like when they're, they react plastic, uh, they're adding that right into it. So one thing we've looked into the past is um, uh, what the, platable ABS, which is basically electroplating a plastic, right? Oh, okay. um, if, if you have the mold release, you can't electroplate it. Uh, and then that also, leads to better 3D printing performance. Because if you're laying down, you know, we all know how 3D printing works, or we hope that everybody watching Probably. does. Uh, when we lay it down, um, you know, you're basically laying a new bead down every time you are, and uh, that lubricant could not allow for the adhesion to happen. Um, so that's a very interesting thing. Uh, on the other side of that, you need slip modifiers, which is more of an internal lubricant for the plastic, um, if the plastic, this, this also ties in kind of the melt flow. Uh, if the plastic doesn't like, if we can imagine all the chains together, right? If they're too tight and like don't move around, we'd want to add a slip modifier, possibly for our application, to make them move the way we need them to. I think the term that I found as we were setting all this up was rheology, the ability for it to mm. move around. It was a, it was a word I'd never seen before. Mm. It's interesting. That's very technical. It is. We should put that on the site. Cool. Okay. Just, just that one word. Reolo Rheology? R-H-E-O-L-O-G-Y, I think it is. Kevin, how do you pronounce that? You're good at pronouncing the words. I haven't seen it spelled. Okay. How am I supposed to pronounce it based on your pronunciation? Why are you assuming I said it wrong? Oh, I was just confirming. My bad. Is there anything more about lubricants you want to talk about? Nope, I want to move on from that. All right, all right. Now we get to uh, reinforcements. This is similar to fillers, but it's like specifically based around reinforcing a polymer. So like, it's a filler with a purpose, a, a, a particular narrow purpose. We could say reinforcement is a subset of fillers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't all fillers have a purpose? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> reinforcements. We have carbon fiber. People love that stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's neat. We have fiber. Do we have any, do we have any of that around here? The thing that I, I powders. The oh, thing right I here. dug about the the carbon fiber fiber filament was how strong it was in one direction, but not like pulling the other. Yeah, and you pull the crud out of it, but it would snap if you sheared it pretty easily. Yeah. That little. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that sentence. I'm gonna 3D print a car, so it'd be super lightweight. Carbon fiber. Uh, car That's what fiber. they use on the BAM to print their cars. That is. Which we are getting to recycle, which will be interesting. The, the BAM? You ever heard of the BAM? No, and the <laughs> viewers may not Okay. As well. What's the BAM? Okay, so the BAM is a big area additive manufacturing machine. BAM. There's also a SAM, which is small area additive manufacturing. Do you okay. think I'm joking? I, I don't. I'm it's just, for real. I'm not. Okay, well anyway, it's a large format 3D printer, right? Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, Who's making it? Uh, Cincinnati Inc. over in Ohio. Um, yeah, they printed the first uh, 3D printed car. They've done a kayak. They've done uh, uh, the Orion spaceship. They did a model of that, a big model, right? Um, I mean, we could print a small model. Um, and they have failed prints, just like the smaller 3D printing. So we're gonna have hopefully a car frame in here we can take apart. I don't know where we're gonna fit it, but we'll figure that piece out. And they use a carbon fiber field because it allows for that stronger um, building, and I think they're having slight issues with warping, but interesting. Yeah. So that's another thing that reinforcements do is uh, they allow the polymer to kind of stay in place, right? So I think it would be easier to print, it would be easier to print ABS with carbon fiber in a non uh, heated build area or build chamber versus printing just straight ABS. That's, that's been our experience. That's been our experience. And the, the parts will come off, they're, they're harder, like you were saying, yeah. Um, okay, so we got carbon fiber, we have fiberglass, Kevlar, and then there's just generally other fibers. They could be, you know, we talked about uh, hemp fiber, there's, these ones aren't really. Does that count? I guess the wood fiber wood, well, wood fiber wood. This is pretty brittle. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a filler, but it, you yeah. know, it's not gonna qualify really as a reinforcement. Right, I think the fibers are like, like a lot of these are fibers, so it's more of like they're tiny strands where like, I'm imagining a very small sawdust particle as like a particle, like a sphere okay. sort of thing. Got it. Um, so yeah, that's reinforcements. And we've kind of talked on uh, 3D850 and the PLA grades, new additives. Um, we've talked about why to use them. The different industries, yeah, so each industry, uh, there's like four main industries in plastics. There's extrusion, there is blow molding grade, so that's like what these containers are made from, mm. is a blow molding process. There's injection molding, which is the caps. So these caps are injection molded. And there's 3D printing, the best one. And each one of those use different fillers, additives, and materials. So I'm a 3D printer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sweet. Um, cool, cool. Hi, hi, 3D print channel. I was print 3D <laughs> channel. Wait, there. print 3D channel. Yeah, they just, they just said hi. <laughs> Woo! Thanks for watching. Yes. Do you have any questions for us? Are they, they're probably nice. No, they just said hi. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Uh, do you want to do this one? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's an important thing for us to talk about because that's yeah. really, I mean, we're, we're giving you the context for why this matters. If, if we didn't have additives, there'd be like four kinds of plastic. Right? Right. It really wouldn't be that much. But when we start talking about additives and a combination of additives, if we, let's assume there are a hundred additives at times a hundred plastics and, and there's so many more you know if there are a hundred additives and let's say we limit you know you could only let's pretend you could only put two additives in any right. one well you know now there's 10,000 varieties right, on top of four polymers right you're stressing me out man right so it becomes really complicated because the way that we're going to recycle something that has you know, brass plus UV is gonna be potentially different than the way we recycle something with aluminum and fire retardant and a stabilizer. Right. 
And some fillers, like, it would be pointless to go backwards. So, like, the carbon fiber, that's, like, how do you filter that? Your filter is, you're going to capture all the particles, all the carbon fiber. So that's, it's, it gets tricky. And, it, like, it becomes really, really complex. And yeah. And that's where, you know, when I look at what's going on with recycling on this stuff, yeah, the capturing waste stream, you know, milk jugs and right. all of the other things that we're working on, I think is really exciting. But then there's this whole other body of science around bacteria yeah. and mold and, and fungus that are breaking down, maybe not the plastic completely, but breaking it down at least in part and removing the volatility of some of these additives and just, it, this, it's, yeah. it's really cool, really crazy science. And I just want everybody out there to understand that this is really complicated on, was it last week or the week before we showed the list of the, the ridiculous, oh, was it like ABS or PLA? I think it was, yeah, it was only one grade. And, there and was, it was just, it was hundreds if not thousands of different pages. kinds yep. of plastic and how all of those need to be recycled differently. Well now, all of, this, all of those coupled with an additive have to be potentially right. recycled differently. So it becomes this really broad problem. And it, it, you know, I think a lot of people, they look at the bottom of a container and they're like, well, you know, this says, PET. says number one, you know, why can't every, the thing I remember when recycling yeah. household waste first came out was, you know, there would be a, a list. We can recycle number five and number seven plastic only. And people right. were like, ah, oh, I'm going to throw everything in there. You know, it's, and this is why, this is why that is such a complicated. Right. The recycling, and we touched on that with our recycling when we had the, the video when yeah. we were all had all that stuff out is like, those are the grades that are being recycled. And those are the commodity grades. You know, when we start talking about all these other fillers, the, you know, the 3d printing materials, that stuff isn't like, there's no recycling stream for it. So it's, you know, we're, we're playing with it. We're building our hardware to be able to process that. And we're learning about it so that a customer out there in the world can take those materials. I mean, how, how are we going to take plastic out of the ocean and recycle that? Like, we don't know what it is. We don't know yet. Yeah. So it's, it's scary. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's going to be interesting. We're working on it. Fortunately, we're not the only ones working on it. Right. We, we need more people working on it. Huge issue. But this is also part of why the information, the, the knowledge that we gain, that's right. why we're putting it out there for free. You know, yeah, we want people to buy our machines that keeps the lights on, but at the same time, we're trying to put this information out to hope that other people build on it. Right, right. We're and kind of, I think we're, you know, we're educating so that people know yeah. what's going on with it. And, and we hope that other people can take this and run with it and, and make an impact. Um, so yeah, a lot going on with plastic additives. It adds a whole nother level to the plastic, uh, to the capabilities that you can 3D print with, to the plastic waste issue, to recycling. Um, it adds a lot. Yeah. yeah. So next time you're printing or extruding something really cool, you know, respect the plastic. Respect it. Don't throw it away. Props to the plastic. Yes. Um, <laughs> we do want to make a quick shout out for our last video. Uh, last video we focused on the master spool uh, print where we took old spools, Here's printed a new spool. We still haven't printed the other side of it, but we will. Um, we still have samples we're giving out, so go to our website. We have a sample page and we have that product listed. Free sample, pay for shipping, um, and see how the filament did. It is an ABS polycarbonate blend, so we would recommend printing at a hotter temperature. Um, we will get a temperature once we figure that out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where am I going? Cool. Thanks for watching. Until next time. This was Phil Bala.